Sorry, I understand the way Buddhism and Shintoism works here in, in Japan as well. It's more of a it's a more of a way of life rather than an institutionalized form of religion. And that makes a lot of difference. Because when religion becomes in, institutionalized, it creates or it dictates the governance and the way people live. That means their life circle around the tenets of their religion and actions that they make, the first thing that they consider before they take a decision is generally what does my religion require me to do. And that's a major thing. So there are of course there are many, many, many religions in the world, right? And we'll not even we'll not even talk about the smaller ones or cults and, and myth and how do you say um, idol followings. Those are in and of themselves are you know good for them. But let's look at the major ones that do exist. Hinduism. How does Hinduism operate? Do you guys know the basis of Hinduism? What is the religious doctrine of Hinduism? Like what is the major belief of Hinduism? Yes. So in, in truth actually Hinduism and Buddhism set, share a basic doctrine or a basic doctrine that the process of being born again, the process of karma, that you continue in the life cycle until you attain some level of higher being. Right? The difference between Buddhism and Hinduism in the sense is that Hinduism actually has gods. They have beings that they do that they worship. You know? They have their 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 trimuti, like Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, they have Ganapati, they have there are many gods that defines uh, that defines or symbolizes different things. And followers, some choose to just worship all gods, some choose to worship specific gods and goddesses because they define you know, virtues or symbols of different personal interests and different personal values. But the doctrine of Hinduism, uh, the doctrine of Hinduism is pretty much the same as Buddhism, that you do good in this life in order for you to be reborn as something better in the next life. And hopefully in the process achieve divinity, right? So Buddhism is uh, different in the sense that they don't have gods. Like they have Siddhartha Gautama, like they have the Buddha, but he is also a human being who has achieved enlightenment, like who has achieved nirvana. And Buddhism also has <coughs> Difference, like the way Buddhism is approached and Hinduism is approached, they are all different in different parts of the world as well. Like the way Buddhism has evolved here in Japan is very different than the Buddhism that has evolved in, for example, in China or in, uh, in Tibet or in India itself as well. Or in Thailand. Thailand is also another majorly Buddhist country. But the way, you know, the doctrine or the basics of it are the same, but there are different facets that have evolved around the culture where that religion goes. Now, the other major ones are the Abrahamic religions. And sometimes people don't realize that these religions are very similar. These three religions are very similar. They share the same historical root. And people don't see that, mostly because they don't understand the doctrines of it. They're called the Abrahamic religion because they all trace back to the prophet Abraham. Uh, if you have ever taken Christianity class, then you would probably also know, also know this. How many, like, do you, do you guys know Biblical history? Biblical history, they call it. The history is, of, history is based upon the Bible. Like Noah, Moses, Jesus, Abraham, his son Isaac, Ishmael. All of these are prominent figures in the Abrahamic religion. Now the first of these, the first of the institutionalized religion is probably, or at least the ones existing today, out of the three major ones, is Judaism. Judaism came, or at least the, the foremost prophet of Judaism is Moses. You guys know Moses, the story of Moses, right? The splitting of the Red Sea. So what happened, uh, the Jews were prosecuted in Egypt during the time of the Pharaohs. So Moses Ray was, you know, was raised as a prophet and he took his people to Israel by splitting the Red Sea. So that's the biblical history of it. From there, you have the second one, the second major one today is Christianity. And the prominent figure in Christianity is of course Jesus. 
Now, for those of you who don't realize it, Jesus was a Jew. But that's besides the point. So for, for Christians, Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus is, you know, the, the, they, worship, they worship Jesus as part of the Trinity. The, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, within Christianity as well, we have a split from the initial, the Catholic Church and the Protestants. So the Catholic Church does not dictate or does not, is not the founding or the foremost body for all Christians in the world, only for Catholics. So people sometimes forget that. People think that the Pope is the leader of all Christians in the world. He's not. He is the leader of the Catholic Church. And Protestant Church are um, much more diverse than the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church, in and of itself, like comparatively to the entire world, still comes back to the Vatican. So they do operate based upon the dictates or the edicts that are given out by the by Vatican City and by the Pope. The, the Protestant churches, however, are a lot more independent in their operation. And they, they work based upon where their church themselves are based. Right? So you have, what, what kind of Protestant denominations do you guys know? Anyone? No? No one knows any kind of... What denomination are you? French. You're French? No, no, no. no. I'm... Are you? Are you a Catholic or are you a Protestant? I'm a Protestant. You're a Protestant. Yes. And what is the denomination of your church? Denomination of church? No. Does anyone know? But they are... Protestant. 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 What are some of the major ones? What's wrong? The Vatican? No, the Vatican is the Catholic Church. Baptist, Methodist. Yes, anyone? You, you know? You? There are many different denominations, basically. So some of them, like the Baptist Church is one, the Methodist Church is one, the Presbyterian. I'm not sure I pronounced that right. The high Presbyterian, Presbyterian. Oh my God! The kids are you recording this? It's a terrible young man. Anyway, so there are many denominations of different churches, and within the Protestant groups, they are also like the minority. They are also small, more conservative minority uh, followers as well. Like for example, the Jehovah Witnesses. You have the Mormons. You have the Amish community. These are also part of the Christian churches, but they are they tend to be more conservative than the larger Protestant churches. But if we were to categorize, would they be part of Protestant? Right? Protestant, right? Yeah, they they're definitely not Catholic. They're not Catholic. They are more of the independent churches that springs after the the split between the Catholics and the Protestants. Right? So Jehovah Witnesses also have like things that they believe in. Like for example, they believe their body is sacred and they don't they don't allow like blood transfusion. They believe in they are pacifists, they are absolute pacifists. So Jehovah Witnesses don't want don't believe like for example if you have a mandatory military service, you they don't want to go to the military because they believe in absolute absolute pacifist, pacifist movement, meaning they don't allow killing or they don't allow the spilling of blood. So there are many things like the Amish, for example, are believers in living a natural life, or so they say. So they don't use technology. So different churches have different categories of the belief and the different levels of adherence to it, right? And then you have Islam. The main prophet is Prophet Muhammad. Muslim believes in all the prophets. To us, all the prophets were correct. But the, the idea or the doctrine behind the Muslim belief is that the messages that these prophets have sent to the people has become corrupted. So, like for example, the biggest difference between Christianity
Christianity and, and Islam is the belief of whether or not Jesus himself was God. Muslims reject that idea. But Muslims believe that Jesus is a very important prophet or is a very important figure in, in the Abrahamic religion. So the message that Jesus sent was correct, but he himself was not divine. He himself was also a human. And he was a prophet. So Prophet Muhammad, for Muslims, Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger. And the all three religions believe in monotheism, meaning there is only one God, right? As opposed to Hinduism, which believes in multiple gods, or Buddhism, which believes in just evolved higher beings rather than a specific God. Okay? You have, of course, a lot of other religions like Wiccans that believe in spirits of nature, Shintoism for you guys that believes in spirits and gods of nature and uh, other, other forms of spirits, of overall living things. So the difference, I suppose, between the Abrahamic religion is the idea of monotheism. That everything you do today in this life is supposed to affect you in the afterlife. That once you die, you get judged by that one God and then you move on either to heaven or hell. And so, within Islam, there are also two separations. One is the Sunni, which is the majority. Just, okay, just in case you guys don't realize here, Protestants are the majority rather than the Catholics, they are bigger. And for Muslims, Sunni is the majority, Shia is, Shia is the smaller group. The divide between the Sunni and the Shias was initially a political divide. Because after the death of Prophet Muhammad, uh, the era after that was known as the era of the Caliphs. The Caliphs are basically rulers, elected rulers. And after the first Caliph, after the first two Caliphs, after <coughs> Abu Bakr and then Uthman, uh, Umar, then there was a, an issue of who would be the next leader. There were, the Prophet's wife at that time supported another leader, and the, there were people who supported the Prophet's son-in-law, which was Ali. So that was when the split started. The split between the Sunnis and Shias started. And after that split, it just evolved differently. The schools of thought evolved differently. So for the Shia, they followed the 12 Imams who came, or at least were descendants, were blood descendants of Prophet Muhammad. For the Sunnis, they have four major schools, uh, or four major Imams that generally decides or has codified the way these Muslims should behave. Uh, those are also not important, but just for you to know, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Hanafi, Hanbali, and Maliki. So anyway, don't worry too much about all of this, but just so that you guys know that religions within, and within themselves are not singular. Uh, each group and how these religions evolve are also very strongly related to the culture and geographic location of these groups, right? So it's the same for Judaism, like European Jews and American Jews are very different than perhaps Israeli Jews. Uh, the same with Christianity for Catholics and for Protestants. The same in terms of adherence between all the churches in the, in the Protestant church, just as for the Sunnis and the Shias as well. The Shias way or reasoning of Islam is quite different. The Sunnis, where they go is also quite different. So in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, Muslims that live within Europe and other liberal, uh, liberal democracies, they are all just as different and just as diverse. So that's the first thing, or at least that's the first point that I want to get across. Okay? So all right, how many of you did not know this before? No? You all knew this already? Yay. <laughs> okay. Now, the biggest issue when you talk about religion generally is the separation of church and state. It's a matter of when a religion becomes the majority identity for the people in the country, that they adhere or follow the certain tenets of the religion, should the government then reflect that that standard or that the tenets of those countries, right? Like for example, we talk about America being a liberal democratic country, but America actually is very deeply religious. You see that societal norms are still governed by Christianity standards in many parts of the country. 
and you'll see that there are still a lot of people who would rather listen or who feels that they need to follow the doctrines of their churches first before before the how do you say before the laws of the state, right? So the first question then, should the state should there be state sanctioned religion? Is state sanctioned religion something that is allowable? And there are a lot of countries that do sanction religion. There are a lot of countries that do have state sanctioned religion. Right? Like my country, for example, we are a multi religious country. We are a multi language, multi ethnic country. But we do have a state sanctioned religion. Islam is the state sanctioned religion. Because the majority, or at least 49%, I think the last from the last census, about 49% of Malaysia is Muslim. But we're not even half of the population, so that majority of us are Muslims. However, supposedly, we guarantee religious freedom, that you can be whatever religion you want. Uh, however, but if you are a Muslim, then you have to follow the rules of the, of the Islamic governance. Right? So, why should separation of church and state happen? That's always a big issue. Right? Remember, the way, the way our society works, we generally have two forms of law. One is the codified law, the civil law, that is based either upon the constitution, or the judiciary, and the legislation that people in a democratic nation craft together. Second is the idea of a moral conduct or a moral code, which is not written, which is not codified, but creates a norm in how people govern their lives, or what is expected and what is needed in, in the way people carry out their lives. Right? Like, there's no law that says you can't wear a bikini on the street, but the moral conduct or the moral, the socially accepted conduct is probably you shouldn't wear a bikini on the streets. Right? So, in that sense, can the state then, can the state then use that moral, use that moral code that we, or at least the majority of the society adhere to, and create it into legislations? Right? What questions, what questions arises under that, in terms of the separation of church and state? Issues of marriage, for example, right? Issues of gay marriages, for example. Issues of maybe polygamy. Issues of. Um, allowed to endorse a certain religion? Should we have prayers in public school? Right? Or do schools have to always be neutral? Should schools be allowed to teach evolution or intelligent design? You guys know the, diff the, the theories of intelligent design and evolution, right? You guys know what intelligent design is, right? Like some of you look very, very lost. Do you guys know what the theory of intelligent design is? Who doesn't know what the theory of intelligent design is? Okay. Evolution, you guys know what the theory of evolution is, right? That humans come through the evolution of, of creatures. We're all a series of wonderful coincidences. Intelligent design is the idea that human beings, or at least all creation on Earth, was designed by an, a higher intelligent being. So, for a lot, for the Abrahamic religions, it would be that there is a God who created human beings. And from there, the process of creation happens. So we are not a series of wonderful coincidences. We are created and designed with a purpose, or purposefully designed, right? So should schools allow the teaching of evolution? Like in America, uh, there are many schools still that doesn't allow the teaching of evolution, right? So in terms of education, there's still is not necessarily a separation of church and state, even in the most liberal of schools. There are a lot, there are a lot of schools that specifically endorse certain religion, there are public schools, but should they be allowed to do that? Should they not be allowed to do that? It's, that's also another debate when you consider when you consider the idea of separation of church and state. And then you have lifestyle choices. These are also issues when you talk about separation of church and state. 
clothings. No, this is not the bikini issue. This is more about wearing prominent religious display out in the street. Like for the Muslims, this is a big this is a big issue. The issue of the burqa. Like France has banned it. Right, that you cannot wear a burqa in public areas. You cannot wear a burqa to school. Turkey, for example, does not allow Muslim women to wear the hijab in universities. So. You also have Singapore, I think, which has, a, which has disallowed the hijab in elementary school. So there are some areas which clothing becomes an issue, that the government legislates the clothing. Like the burqa is a big issue, mostly because there is no how, like the, for, for the people who chooses to wear it, that says there is no harm to others. But for the government that legislates it, they say that there is no women who would willingly make that choice. That in fact, a majority of the women don't make that choice because they are socially coerced by their people and by their religion, right? Because in Islam, uh, in Islam, the burqa is not a requirement. It's not. The hijab might be, but the burqa isn't. However, there are many people, there are people who choose to stay or who choose to show their devotion by taking on the burqa, right? So that's why France says we don't want, we don't want that because it's a new form of enslavement. Sexuality, sexuality is normal. That's a big debate. Uh, it's a big debate because a lot of people don't want to tie it back to religion because they don't want religion to have a bad name, I suppose. But it is a lot. A lot of it is actually religious based. And whether or not you know gays should be allowed to marry, whether or not gays should be allowed to adopt, uh, whether transgender, whether we should allow people to become transgender or bi or whatever other LGBT issues. Reproductive rights, that's also another big one. In terms of both abortion and birth control. For example, the Catholic Church does not allow birth control. The Catholic Church is completely against condoms. Uh, and health. Health is what I mentioned earlier. For the Jehovah Witnesses, they don't allow blood transfusion. So should the government then be uh, be able to override these these religious beliefs in order to save someone's lives? Like for example, parents who don't allow the hospital to give their children blood transfusion because they are Jehovah Witnesses. Should the government or the state then have the right to override these parents' uh, religious choices in order to save the child. Any questions on this in terms of separation of church and state? Yes. Uh, I'm the Christian team, I'm talking about uh, Eastern Orthodox. Eastern Orthodox, yeah. You're yeah, part of the Western church. Yeah. The Catholic church is the Catholic church. Well, I also see that uh, three types of Christianity are the first one, the second one, the second one, the third 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 the third one, the the third one, the third one, the the third the 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 Catholic Church was the mainstream was the mainstream form of Christianity at that time. <coughs> until people, uh, you know, until uh, the rise in Germany and uh, they started saying, no, we don't think that this is the way Christianity should progress and we protest from it, and thus they separated from it. Right? Um, you mentioned about these schools in the States um, not being allowed to teach evolution. Mm -hmm. Are they legalized, le legally forbidden to do so, or yeah. interesting? <laughs> <laughs> because the, the that is done by the, the local regional church or something. You know, they get they pressurize the school and yeah. Um, you see, the ed public the the education system in America comes are, is not under federal governance. They are under state governance, and state governance reflect the the. 
the society, how conservative the society is, or how liberal the society is. And you know, like areas in America which they call the Bible Belt, like the, the South Central areas where Christianity is very strong. I think this this comes back to here as well. The same issues in terms of the that right, the Catholic Church. What's wrong? I mean, what are the influences in there? What powers do they hold? I guess you could come into that as well. Polygamy is allowed for Muslims. Yes. Malaysia. <coughs> what other countries? Uh, I think countries that have a majority Muslim uh, law allows polygamy. Uh, not just African countries, uh, Indonesia allows it, Malaysia allows it, um, Middle Eastern countries, yeah, Middle Eastern countries where Islam is the, is the majority, African countries as well, they, they allow for polygamy. I think in India as well, there are different marriage laws, so uh, we'll come to that here. in terms of the absolute devotion of, uh, or the absolute show of piety, meaning your, the show of your devotion to religion. A majority of women who wear burqa don't do it willingly. They do it because they are socially coerced by the society or by the men in their lives, saying that this is what a devout woman should be like, that she should not show her identity, that she should cover herself, that the closer you want to get to God, the more you should cover yourself. So. That a majority of the people choose not to do that. I mean, choose, uh, do not choose to do it. They are forced to do it, right? So to France, to, um, to the French government, they think it's oppressive. They think it's a form of enslavement because it turns women into objects. That you take away the identity of the woman in order for her to become or to be seen as a good woman. So you cover her completely. Right, so that's why the French government bans it. They are also worried, of course they have other issues like they are worried about security, when you don't have, when you can't see people's identity and you have people dressing up in burqa and going into banks and robbing the banks. So you have issues like this. But the biggest, or at least the biggest justification that they gave was the fact that it creates, you know, it's a form of uh, objectification of women, or, or at least uh, uh, it creates women as a property, it makes women seen as a property and as, as a form of slavery or how do you say, they are under the power of their men. The problem with that, however, is that how do you then deal with women who do freely choose to wear the burqa? Because there are a lot of women who choose to wear it on, on their own. There are also, I would like, Comparatively, I would say there are less of them, but there are also women who do choose it to wear, to choose to wear it on their own, right? And there are these women are educated, they are independent, they do know the choices that they make. So how how do you then balance the harm, something that in a majority does create harm to women because they lose their independence, but protect the people who still want to do it? So that's the controversy basically. Because the burqa, I think the burqa doesn't, the burqa doesn't, isn't, isn't it, how do you say, I don't know, like for me, myself, I don't agree with the burqa, but I don't think it's the right of the state to legislate how women choose to show their piety, okay? 
that the closer you are to God, the more you have to disappear. This was a, a sentence used by a woman, by an American activist uh, against the Buddha. But I don't think it's her right, or I don't think it's the French government's right to decide that you should not be able to wear this. Because a lot of women do decide to wear it, and it, does, it takes a lot of courage to wear the burqa. It takes a lot of courage to choose to devote yourself to a religion to that extent. And women who do this have every right to make their choice for themselves. Right? Why then, as a government who says that you are supporting freedom of religion, now taking away the right of these women to wear whatever they want? Why does a woman have to be, I don't know, dressed in a certain manner to be considered liberated? Why does the clothing of a woman decide how liberated or how oppressed she is? Right? Yes? All right, the concept of separation of the church and state is so important in liberal democracies. In, in my opinion, like if the state is doing by the religion, it never allows you or allows you to choose other religion or like such sexuality like those things. Mm -hmm. you, 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 right? Or, why, why is the concept of separation of church and state is important? Why is the separation yes. of church and state important? Because the state should be protecting the people, not this not deciding for people what what their choices are. Right? Earlier in the day, you guys talked about rights to choices and the rights to pursue ha to pursue happiness. A religion is a big part of that. And thus, how people how people choose or how far people choose to adhere to religion is also a big part of that. So if the church takes the side of one religion or the church takes one doctrine of a religion and makes, them, makes that their law, it would then be infringing on other people other people's right to practice their religion or to not practice their religion, right? So, for example, if I don't, I'm an, if I'm an atheist and I don't believe in God and I don't want to be praying to something that I don't believe in, why should a public school that I attend make me sit through prayers, right? Or if I live in a Muslim majority country and I'm not Muslim, why do I have to go, why do I have to wear and cover everything like the Muslims? So it's the same in terms of sexuality, like if I don't believe in the way, or if I don't believe that being gay is wrong, why does the church, or why does the state have a right to tell me that it is, that, that it, that it's wrong? So my morality and my standards of living should not be dictated by the government. At least the government should not, even if the government, you know, have laws against it, it shouldn't be a codified belief. Even if society tells me I'm wrong, the government should not be telling me I'm wrong. 